Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In a previous video in this series, we looked at the basic power formula and where that comes from. We saw there was a definite relationship between power, current and voltage, and you can see that laid out on the screen here. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to continue considering this subject of the basic power formula, but we're going to transpose that formula and then use it in a different way to show just how important this formula is to our electrical design and installation work. So let's head down to the workshop and we'll outline how we're going to achieve this in this video. So we saw very clearly from the calculations that we just did in the classroom that there is a relationship, a mathematical relationship, between power, current and voltage. Now that's very interesting and it's important to know that for our exams because we may be asked questions such as which of these four formulas is the one for calculating power or which one of these formulas is the one for calculating current using power and voltage. We may even be given a voltage and a current and be asked to calculate what the power would be and those are all very important. But actually this is a really critical calculation that we need to understand for our electrical installation work. Why is that? Well, let me paint you a scenario. What happens when a customer calls you up and says, I'd like you to come round, please, and fit my new shower for me? Certainly you say, what size is the shower? And they say, well, it measures about 40 centimetres by 20 centimetres. You all have a good laugh and then you clear it up and ask for the power rating of the shower. Now what's quite interesting is that on that shower it won't tell you the current that it's expected to draw, but it will tell you the power rating. Now you need to know the current that that shower is going to draw so that you can start thinking about what size cable do I need to install? What size breaker do I need to put in? Will the supply be able to deliver that amount of current? And the way that we do that is we use the transposed version of the power formula that we looked at in the classroom in order to calculate how much current is going to flow. And that really is the starting point for figuring out your installation of that circuit that's going into that property. Now, just so you know, when you come across this in your design unit, it might look a little bit different to this. It might say something like IB will be the subject with a little B in the subscript. And that's the symbol that we use to indicate that we're calculating what we call design current. In other words, the current that we expect to flow when we do the design work for an installation. So as it so happens, I have a shower here. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna head back up to the classroom and we're gonna do a quick demonstration on how to figure out how much current this shower will draw when we're doing the design work for that circuit. So I've unboxed the shower. This is the Triton Dominica. I think this might be a slightly older model of shower. It's sat in my garage for over five years now, so it might be uh, discontinued, I'm not sure. But what we're looking at here, what we're really interested in in the first instance is the power rating of the shower because we need to know that in order to calculate the current, which is kind of the end game of this little portion of the video. So this Triton shower has a power rating, you can see on the bottom here, of 8.5 kilowatts. So 8.5 kilowatts is our power. So that's the first piece of information that we need. So we've got that on there, 8.5 kilowatts. Now we're trying to find the current in this video. So we want to know what is the current gonna be drawn by this shower. So I equals something, we don't know what yet. And we're also interested in, in order to calculate that current, we'll need to know what the voltage that's being supplied to it is. Now, in the case of the voltage, we know that we state the value of the voltage, the nominal voltage in the UK is 230 volts. 230 volts. We know that we can find that varying, it can go up or down from that value. But generally speaking, when you do design work, we use the nominal voltage, so the voltage that we say our electricity is supplied at, which is 230 volts. So we need to find the current. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to transpose the formula, and then I'm gonna show you the common method that everybody uses to carry out transposition of this kind of formula. I don't particularly like doing it the second way, uh, because while it's got its value and it's, it's good if you kind of you get stuck um, and it can help you to transpose things quite quickly, it doesn't help you to build up your transposition skills, which is something that uh, I think as electrical learners, as electricians, transposition is something that we need to get good at really. So let's figure out how we're gonna change this formula around to find the current of the shower. So we start off from our formula, 
P is equal to I times by V. We want to make I the subject. Now, generally speaking, when I do transposition, the way I look at it is I think if I want to get this by itself, I need to figure out what I'm doing to that and then I need to do the opposite. Now this is an easy one because there's only one stage where you've got multiple things happening to that eye, that's where it gets a little bit tricky, but this is nice and easy. So at the minute we are uh, taking I and we are timesing it by V. And then just think to yourself, what is the opposite of timesing by V? Well, the opposite of timesing by V is very simply to divide by V. So I'll let it out like this, P is equal to I times V, and then we're going to do the opposite function which is to divide by V. And when we do something to one side, we have to do it to the other in order to keep the truth of this equal statement in place. So we've got I times V divided by V. And then when we look at that, we think, well, if I times by a number and then divide by that number, I get back to where I started from. doesn't matter what the number is. If I times by three, and then I divide by three, I get back to the original number that I was multiplying. So again, let's, let's just volley some random numbers in here. If I make this two and this three, two times three gives us six. And then if I divide by three, I get back to the original two. So it's like this bit never happened. Another way that you can view this as well is if you look at just that part there by itself, if you're uh, doing V divided by V, you're doing a number divided by itself. And apart from zero, any number divided by itself will always give you one. So it's like we've got that i and we're timesing it by one. And we know that when we multiply by one, it makes absolutely no difference to the number. The number stays the same. So in effect, what we're left with, we can imagine that this times by v divided by v never actually happened, which leaves us with our nice neat formula. P over v is equal to i. And there's our transposed formula. And again, because my OCD won't let me leave this alone, I have to put it down as I equals P over V. It's always good to have the subject on the left. So there we go, there's our transposed formula. Now, just in case you're looking at that and thinking, well, I'm not sure I could do that. There is a transposition video on the way, so don't worry about that. There will be further help on this. Uh, what you can do is you can use the triangle method for transposing your formula. How does that work? Well, if we put uh, a triangle on the board that looks like this, and then put a line there and a line there. And then if we say that P goes there, I goes there and V goes there, this line represents a division function and this line represents a multiplication function. So if I want to find the power, I cover up the P and I'm left with I times V. If I want to find I, I cover up I and I'm left with P divided by V which is the formula that we found by our kind of more strenuous transposition method. And then if I want to find out what V is, if I want to find the voltage in a circuit, I can use P divided by I. So that's going to leave me with P divided by I. So that's a method for using transposition. Um, like I say, I'm not a big fan of it because I think it's a bit of a crutch. Uh, and if you can get away from using that and figure out how to do transposition properly, you'll equip yourself with skills that will come in really handy when the formula gets much more complicated and doesn't sit quite so comfortably inside a triangle. So, whichever way you do it, uh, we've got our formula I equals P over V. So, we know what P is, we know what V is. So, the next thing we can do is just very simply put these values into our uh, calculation. So we can say now that I will be equal to 8. Now because this is 8.5 kilowatts, the killer means 1000. I like to think you can swap that out for times 10 to the power of 3 uh, and you could just put that straight into the calculation. But that times 10 to the 3 means move the decimal point 1, 2, 3 spaces and it becomes 8500 like that divided by 230. So there's our power, there's our voltage, and that's gonna give us our current. Just a little word on this, as uh, we mentioned, uh, if you are doing this for design work, if you're doing this in the real world, what you'll find is that this will actually be called IB, like that, it'll have a little B in the subscript. IB is equal to 8,500 divided by 230, and that just means design current. So it's the current that you're going to base the design of your circuit on. So let's do that calculation, 8,500 divided by 230. 
So we've got that 8,500 divided by 230, and that gives us a value of 36.96. So we've got 36.96 amps. So the current that our shower is going to draw, according to our design calculation, will be 36.96 amperes. That's how much current that circuit's going to draw. So in this video, we've seen how critically important this formula is to electricians because when we transpose it, it gives us a formula that we can use for our design calculations in our real world installation work, which is obviously super helpful. So all that remains in this video is to say, thank you very much for watching.